my name is Joanna Reardon, and firstly I'd like to thank Shin Fei and other individuals for inviting me here to speak with you this evening. As you can see, I was born without my limbs, but my motto in life is no limbs, no limits. This week, for so many people up and down the country, it has been a hard and tedious week with the new revelations of how the bankers almost single-handedly destroyed this country. Further to that, it was extremely upsetting to learn that people with disabilities are going to be hit with yet another cut to their special needs hours. It would appear that the society I live in, and the society we choose to accept, has far less value and respect for the ordinary, hard-working citizens of this country. Time and time again, we see how the government has tried to control and manipulate its own citizens into thinking that we need to take these cuts, that it is best for our country as a whole if we do. I would love if the Taoiseach of this country had to live the life I lead. I would love if the bankers of this country would wake up one day and realise what they have done has not only destroyed our country, but has resulted in many vulnerable people becoming more and more isolated and dependent. However, I'm asking people who are here to start challenging this. All my life I faced and over, overcome enormous difficulties and as a result my life has changed for the better. The disability I have is known as total amelia. There is no medical explanation as to why I was born this way, but I, or indeed my family, have never allowed it to hold me back. We should never allow anyone to hold us back, because we all want to live a life that is fair, honest and just. The only difference is we allow others to take control. The only person who is controlled in my life is me, and my destiny is also in control by me. I'm literally one of seven people in the world living with this rare physical form, and I can safely say it does not make me different. It simply makes me unique. When I was born in 96, there was no medical help available to me that was sufficient to my needs. There was, there was no one there to support my family, and, and I had to rely on the support of my family and friends. This has been instrumental in building a world around me that allows me to take full control of my life. From an early age, I've had a massive reliance on the use of technology. Technology has opened up a world of possibilities for me, for which I have excelled to both my education and social environment around me. It is sad, therefore, to think that there are many others living in this country who do not have the luxuries I have, even though we live in a so-called so developed and civil part of the world. It would appear today that the government would like, pe would like to see people like me and not be... Yeah. <laughs> iPads, they're so difficult to use. <laughs> I'll start that sentence again. <laughs> it would appear today that the government would like people like me to be seen and not heard. I may not have my limbs, but certainly I have my voice, and I intend to use that to help empower all. I could have easily ended up in an institution, never realising my full potential. I could have succumbed to, to a system that would have neglected and forgotten me. I could have become voiceless, another human statistic, like so many people who live in this country today. It is not easy to wake up every morning and rely on somebody to get you out of bed, make your breakfast, change your clothes, or get you ready for school. It is not fair that the government can constantly make cuts to the weakest in society while it allows others to live on big bonuses, golden handshakes, and <laughs> and pension entitlements that go way beyond a realistic ex expectation. They, these are the very people who have adversely shattered our country and embarrassed us on an international stage. I, like so many others out there, am the future of this country. Not cocky at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can offer what no banker can offer, a chance to fix this country for the better. I, like so many young people, are the brains and fuel that could drive this economy back to positivity, but instead our government are forever treating people like me and making us immigrate. They are happy for us to build the future of, other, of others while we continue to suffer. We all have a choice and we all have a voice. It is just some people are afraid and not encouraged to use it. Imagine living a life whereby you need someone to help you scratch your nose, rub your eyes, or simply move you from place to place. Imagine a life where pe whereby people freely and openly try to discriminate against you day after day. This is the life that some, if not all, people with disabilities has to bear. But I know that if we stand united, we can overcome and we will allow change. Uh, iPads, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, we had enormous difficulty in transforming the local community and environment around me. 
It took years to convince our local county council to run public buildings or footpaths. Further to that, there was no wheelchair spaces in my town until one day we as a family decided enough is enough. If we all decided enough was enough and we all spoke with one voice, the government just might listen to us, hopefully. <laughs> For far too long, people with disabilities have stood on the fringes of Irish societies. We have been neglected and forgotten by the very people who are supposed to be there to help us. We can no longer live like this. We can no longer accept lesser value to our lives because we all deserve better. What people don't seem to realise is that we are all born with disabilities. As Aidan said, it's his mouth. To me, it's my limbs and also my mouth. <laughs> Reality is just some disabilities are more obvious than others. We all have a role in society and each of us should be trying to make life easier for others, not harder. Some of the great heroes fought and died for this country. They had no wireless, no internet access, no iPads and iPads, but what they did have was a grit and determination to achieve things better for its people. How is it possible that in 1916, men and women who were far less educated than us, that had no, little no mean, means of mass communication, could take on one of the biggest empires of the world, and yet the people of Ireland today can't? This really does not make sense. <laughs> in 2011, I decided that I was going to try and do something to help people with disabilities in Ireland. I felt at the time we had no voice, and I knew I had the power to change this. I took on the Irish government and got them to reverse the cut they were going to make to the disability payment. It soon became apparent that my approach and my choice were very welcome and refreshing to the wider public. Also, the women from the Magdalene Laundries have done the same. In order to evoke change, we must believe in change. In, 20, in 2012, I was invited to New York by the United Nations to address the world's leading women in technology. I was asked to challenge the world to do something for me, and I saw this as a great opportunity to enhance my independence further. The task was simple and the challenge somewhat deemed impossible. I have always wanted a robot, and I knew that this way, my chance to get people thinking and talking, and guess what, it really did work. We are all presented with opportunities to, li to live better lives, it's just that some people are afraid to do so. As American President Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Life is about living, and just because I have no limbs does not mean I will be limited. Lots of people seem to think if, that if you have a disability, you must sit in the corner all day, every day, watching the world go by, voiceless. I can thoroughly say that in my life, and I hope in the lives of others, we do not allow this false perception to take over. As a society, we cannot become complacent, and we need to ensure that every citizen, not just in Ireland, but across the world, is treated with the same level of respect, irrespective of their ability. We should be empowering every individual to be the best they can be, and we should be encouraging an ethos of independence in both mind and physicality. There are many great Irish men and women who have done this over the years, through arts, culture, po politics and science. We all deserve a quality of life, but there are many challenges we face, and the biggest challenge I face is the, is the fight to remain independent. We fought for independence once and we won. If we have to fight it again, then so be it. But we should not sit back and allow people in power, or people who mistreat power, to get away without taking responsibility. People often misjudge me and my ability, but believe it or not, I can do most things any able-bodied person can do. I can send texts, tweets, update my Facebook status, and do my homework with the flick of my chin, top and bottom lip, along with my left hand, as I like to call it. I have been given the chance in life to explore the world around me, and with it I have taken on the world to make my own journey through life. Yes, there are times when I'm down, yes, there are times when I fail, but like most people, I do not see failure as a limitation. I merely see it as an obstacle I can and, over and will overcome. This is why it upsets me to think that people can never see beyond the word disability in order to see our true ability. I, like my brothers, can play my PlayStation, Nintendo DS, iPod, iPad and laptop. I can type 36 words a minute and for someone with no links, that is an incredible achievement in itself. My imperfections have allowed me to be a better person, a more knowledgeable person, with a greater understanding of what I want or need in life. Before I came here today, I decided to be a bit Republican and look up the Irish population. <laughs> Why not? I might as well 
wear my green shirt with white or something like that. <laughs> and there is a part in it which I feel is fundamental to how I think. It is a phrase that should be used and seen in every school, workplace and home throughout Ireland. It says we as a country should cherish all of the children of the nation equally. The society I currently live in does not promote this value. I seem to live in a country that is obsessed with segregating and isolating people. I live in a country whereby we constantly out ourselves down and for what, put ourselves down and for what. We are a great country and we are a special country, but we should not allow a handful of people to get away with making our country a disgrace. We appear so self-conscious of what other people think that we forget about why we are all here in the first place. I want to grow up in a world that is inclusive, not just for me, but for everyone. I want to grow up in a world that allows me the freedom to be the person I know I can be. These are the same values as those men, and women, those men women and children who fought for our country believed in. They are not the standards we live by today. I could have easily fallen into the trap of being taken to a special needs school, but instead my family went against this. It has empowered me to know and ultimately understand that I am not different. I'm just the same as everyone else. And like everyone else, I will achieve all my goals and ambitions if we are given the chance to do so. Limitless or otherwise, I know that I have something to offer to my society. People seem to measure equality in different ways and more often than not, it is the people at the bottom who are perceived to be the weakest that suffer the most. If we stop to think and listen to these people and what they have to say, then maybe these are the individuals that will enlighten us to a world of possibility that has no limitations and no obstacles. I wake up each and every day and think to myself, if I can do this now, what is it that I will be able to achieve in the future? This is why I was delighted to win the Rehab Young Person of the Year Award in 2012. For me, it was an acknowledgement that let me understand that what I'm doing is worthwhile and people with disabilities can make a change. We all have a responsibility to ensure the laws we pass are inclusive for every individual. People with disabilities should not have to fight for the right to be independent. People with disabilities should not live in fear or anxiety. The legislators of our country and the people who have the power to protect us should be ensuring that any law which is passed is a progressive one that will enhance the quality of one's life and not take from it. In the last few years, we have seen how the Irish government have been ruthless in trying to cut mobility allowance, to cut the SNA numbers, and of course the disability payments. Let us hope that by coming here tonight, that you will go back to your home thinking, in fact, that mindset is completely wrong. In relation to the SNA cuts, I believe they are a disgrace, and it's disgusting that they are, and it is disgusting that they are targeting the most vulnerable. days of our lives, but for too many people, school isn't very happy. We need to change this by changing our attitude on how we teach and look at children. Primary schools is the key ingredient to allow young people the best start in their education. By allowing schools to have a more inclusive ethos, this in turn, this in turn will allow people and kids like me to feel they too can achieve. One of the most crucial developments within school is that of special needs assistance. These individuals are the lifeline for any person who has a disability. They, they help me with basic tasks and they allow me to get on with my job of learning. Without my special needs assistance, I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure where I would be today because she is a vital source within my school. She helps me to open my laptop, turn my pages, or help me pick up my pen whenever it falls. If I or her children did not have this assistance, it would be safe to say that I may not have been allowed to go to a main, mainstream school. These people also... This person also allows me to keep up with all my other friends in the classroom. Notwithstanding this, I can safely say that everybody in my school takes into account my needs, but I know that I'm extremely lucky to have this. I equally know that there are some schools in Ireland that cannot provide this or are prevented from doing so. It is so important that we do not allow people to do this. We should never allow money to dictate what sort of an education we provide. This could have a disastrous effect on people who have disabilities and we need to make sure that this never happens. Also, I'm very grateful to have the books formatted so they're easily, easily accessible. Without my parents fighting the government for the books and without Christine O'Mahony, I would still be here struggling trying to keep my textbooks open and I'd probably fall behind. The books are on a memory stick and my textbooks are linked up to Microsoft Word, which I like to call my copybook. I am now included in all school activities just like everybody else. The more inclusive we make schools, the better environment we create. This allows young people the opportunity to grow and develop in a way that is invaluable. 
And while theory-based school and learning is very important, we must not forget the importance of practical learning too. People need to stop and think of the implications that this will have, not just on me, but others like me. I would ask anybody here today to walk a mile in my shoes, and when they do, they might realize the significance of this help. People all over the country are crying out for a change. My aim in life is to help make that change happen. This is why I want to become a journalist, even though Eamon don't even hate me. <laughs> to be honest, if it's as corrupt as he says, the next sentence is just useless. <laughs> it will provide me with an outlet for my voice and the voice of other people with disabilities to be heard. If Eamon was here, he'd actually probably hit me with that hurry down there. <laughs> Change is instrumental in allowing us all to live a life that is equal. It is such a pity that those who are elected to office or serve as TDs cannot see this too. If there is one thing you can take away from me this evening, I hope it is this. There is no obstacle in life, only you. We all have the power to make a change. This is going very public again. Just like Kevin Barry, the hunger strike victims, and many more besides them, it is just that some people need more help along the way than others. Uh, for me, I'm on the bush. Thanks very much, and I hope you all enjoy.